Dixon to ride. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We're still working on this O2ZR600 EFI Wrecked Edition Rebuild. As you saw in the last video, we tried to get this thing started and we actually couldn't get it started. There wasn't any spark. Well, I started going through the manual and uh, I took the, the ECU off itself and I'm not even getting a flash here. So I started testing things and went through the manual, checked some stuff out. Well, you got a few things here. So on your stator, you have this plug here. And I'll tell you the whole backstory on this. Well, this plug is actually for the uh, high and low speed coil, ignition coils. And then you have this yellow plug down here. That's your lighting coil. Well, not yellow plug. It's the plug with the yellow wires on it. That one right there. And then you have these two right here. So this one is actually for the injectors. It's like the injector trigger coil. And then this is for the fuel pump. And then there's one more back here that comes off the stator right there. This uh, green and brown, that's always your, your spark trigger coil from these older ones, those colors. So that actually is supposed to be 190. This came out to uh, 179 and some change. So that's good. Um, this one I believe is good for the fuel pump. But then the trigger coil for the injectors is completely dead. It's an open circuit. And then for the, ig this, the ignition coils here, the brown to green is for coil one. And that is, they're supposed to both be 17 ohms. Well, that one's like uh, 17 and a half. And then the other one is for uh, coil number two, the violet and green. That one is like 7.8. So I'm hoping that the limited resistance in that, or the lower resistance, didn't send too much voltage to the computer and fry it. <clears throat> so, uh, the, like I said, the injector coil here with the blue... Uh, those are actually supposed to be 19 ohms between those. And so here's the issue. If you go back and look at my series on this when I first did it, um, I had a problem with the RPMs like bogging out around 6,500 RPMs. And I was like, what the heck is going on? You know, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a stator. And so when I opened this up and I looked at that stator, it actually looks like an OEM stator, or not an OEM stator, but an aftermarket stator. And so um, I ended up going online and uh, ordering one from West Michigan Snowmobile, and they gave me a, a good stator for this. It, I still have it. It tests out fine today. Well, I put that one in, and it was doing the same thing. So if you go and look at that series of this when I first started rebuilding it, it ended up being the, the throttle stop switch. And so I rebuilt that, and it ran fine after that. So I left, I put the this original one back in here that came with the sled, and I left it. So it must have went bad, and it's, oh, it's aftermarket. So that's testimony to crappy aftermarket stuff. So I now I have this one, and this good OEM one, and I'm going to put that in there. And as long as we got good spark, then hey, we'll be good to go, and we can finish what we're doing here. The only thing left to do at this point once again put the skid in still haven't done that i'm kind of saving that for last and then uh i gotta still solder that right hand warmer um wire and then uh i gotta put the the pad back on and the console there on this the uh handlebars and then that's it this thing should be good to go i got cooling in it already because i was tr gonna have to try and start it but yeah so that's where we're at right now i'm gonna pop the exhaust off and then uh, once we get the exhaust off, we'll have to remove the recoil housing. Those are just 10 millimeters. I'm going to need 7 16 for the one bolt down here. And then 10 millimeter to get the recoil housing off. Get that out of the way. And then I think like a three quarter for the, um, the main nut for the flywheel. You want to loosen that up. And then another... 10 millimeter for the three bolts that hold the, the starter pulley onto the flywheel. So you loosen those up, take that off. Once you get everything loosened up, take the, the pulley off and then put your flywheel puller on there with the three 
bolts and then bang you pop the, the uh, flywheel off and then the stator so here's the stator it's only held on by these three bolts right here and then as you see i ended up taking off the plug that came on this one because oh, i can't remember what happened for some reason the old plug wasn't on the the stator that was that's in there now wasn't good and i took it off of here and I think it was just, I think the other one was black. And this one is clear, and that's why it's on there now. And I'm not sure why I did that. I can't remember. But that's what we're getting ready to do now. So I'm going to bang that out real quick. If you want to see how that's done, you can go look at that other video. I'll put the link up there. But I'm going to get this done right now because, you know, we're still on a time crunch. We didn't get to make it up to not this afternoon, which is Friday. We didn't get to make it up to, to Grayling like we wanted to, Grayling, Michigan. They only got like four or five inches, six inches maybe in some spots, but there's, uh, I ended up canceling the reservations for the hotel and we normally stay at this one hotel and it was completely booked up yesterday already. So then we were going to stay, uh, at the hotel next, next to it. And, uh, so I reserved two rooms for me and a buddy down the street and he reserved a snowmobile and then we started talking about it last night cause they didn't get that much snow. And I decided today I was going to, you know, see if how it was. And the, the guy that I made the reservations with told me to call him back by 12 o'clock last night. And I wouldn't get charged. So I ended up doing that because I didn't want to get charged for it. And there's still other hotels that are in the area that we can stay at. So if all goes well, we're going to get this thing started tonight again. As long as the ECU is not bad, I'm hoping that that stator going bad didn't take out the ECU as well. So if the state, if the, the ECU is good, then we'll be heading up probably first thing in the morning. So, all right, gang, we got everything buttoned up. I got the stator back in there, the other stator's in the garbage. So we're gonna try first start up, see what happens. So we got pretty much everything ready to go. All this stuff's good. Let's just do a once over, make sure I got everything. There's that. Probably take that off. Let's pick up some tools here. If it does start, they won't vibrate off. This garage is a mess right now. We're scrambling for the morning. Hey, Calvin, you want to do the honors? Yeah, did you want to start it? You want to start it? You want to start it? <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Here we go. Let's go. Here we go. Get in and button this up. We're ready to go. All right, guys, thanks for watching. You guys take care. Come on back. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the alert bell. Everybody you can join the community. Everybody else is joining. We got like 3,500 subscribers, man. Come on back. We got more. I got another sled I'm going to rebuild. And then more after that. I got a Thundercat that I'm going to completely restore. You guys got to watch that one, man. I don't know if it, it's not going to be right away. It's going to be after the 96 580 EFI triple port engine that I put in a ZR2 chassis. Well, it was with a ZR2 body. Now I'm going to put it in, a, I'm going to put a ZR3 body on it. So guys, stick around, subscribe to the channel. I got a lot more. Take care. Come on back and God bless. <laughs>